Okay, I'm gonna be making the switch from full frame to crop sensor. This is the Sony FX30. It is a crop sensor version to the Sony FX3. And just in case, for those that don't know, ASPC or crop sensor is just a smaller sensor version compared to the Sony full frame sensors. Essentially, you have the same resolution options, the same slow-mo options, the same color options. The only real difference is clarity in photos, clarity in certain lenses, more lens options. And on top of that, having larger sensor does help in low light situations. But we live in a time where tech and crop sensor lenses have come such a long way that even the 2024 cameras produce better low light capabilities than some of the best cameras five to 10 years ago. Oh fuck, I just realized I'm already shooting on it right now. Let me swap these out real quick. Okay, so now I finally have you on the full frame FX3 version and this is the FX30 version. Obviously, aside from my setup and lens, not much of a difference to it. And while I'm keeping the FX3 as like my main cinema camera, I am getting rid of my Sony a7 IV and Sony ZV-E1 to replace it with the Sony FX30. Reason being, aside from the simple fact that I just fucking can, is in all reality in 2024, with the type of shit that I do, most people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference between crop sensor footage and full frame footage. It's really one of those things I've been talking about a lot lately where us, the artists, the creatives, we make it tougher than it really needs to be. It's like we set these standards or idea that if you're not jumping through hoops to create your content, you know, recording on the flattest profile, shooting on the most expensive full frame variety options, that essentially you really didn't put in as much work as you could have, right? But the consumer doesn't honestly fucking care. As long as you could tell a good story, be relatable in some way, provide some kind of value, humor, escape from people's day-to-day -day lives, then they'll watch your videos. But even still, from a professional standpoint, the Sony FX30 is actually even approved as a Netflix camera. Meaning with the FX3 and the FX30, even though this is crop sensor, if I was to do a documentary and I wanted to sell it to Netflix, they would actually approve it. So it's just interesting times that we live in where people are still creating these standards to have full frame cameras, but even your most reputable media consumption sites in the world allows crop sensor cameras for their shit. Anyways, enough of my ranting about the overall debate. Let's get into what I got and why I got it. So again, FX30, I got the new 11 millimeter F1.8. You guys let me know what you thought about it at the start of the video. I applied a Tiffin Black ProMist filter. You guys know my vibe on that already. We have the digital Sony ECM-E1MB or something. ECM-B1M. I've been using this microphone for years, super clutch. Again, you guys heard it at the start of the video. You let me know what you think. And then we're running a 256 gigabyte Sony Tough card inside of it as well. And that's it for this setup. But I guess the bigger question is why? Why get rid of two full frame cameras that are still very good in 2024 alongside multiple full frame lenses to essentially downgrade or downsize to a crop sensor camera? Number one is look at the size, man. With the launch of this lens here, as you can see from the start of the video, this is easily able to produce just as good quality for the type of content that I create on an insane budget. I mean, the camera body alone was $1,700 in comparison to like three grand for the FX3, the lens that you're looking at right now, $2,000. This lens right here, $500. The entire setup that you are watching me on right now is a $6,000 camera setup as to where this, what you've seen at the start of the video, is a $3,000 camera setup. Now, I obviously wouldn't recommend this camera for everybody. I'm not doing this as like a starter camera, encouraging everybody to go out and buy it. The point is I've outgrown or have gone down a different career path to no longer need or require the use of so many full frame camera lenses and a camera like the Sony a7 IV. When I got the a7 IV, for example, I was still doing a lot of product photography. I relied almost weekly on being able to take higher end photos and work around shit. It was a tool that worked for me at the time, but now that I have my own brand in content in itself, I don't really have the need for it. So I already have the Sony FX3. I'm really happy with this. I use this for all my YouTube videos. I use it for all the important shit. 
And this thing is a workhorse. Long recording times, great quality, great color, image stabilization, higher end video resolution with DCI. And I was running into some issues with the a7 IV and the Sony ZV-E when it comes to recording time, especially when doing simple things like podcasts. So I had to downgrade all the quality and make sure I ran everything in 1080p because I was worried about those not being able to record for long durations. On top of that, I stream over on a site called Kick and I stream a lot of hours. And I was essentially forced to keep the a7 IV because the Sony ZV-E1 wasn't able to stream long hours. It would overheat after a period of time. Now, while I think that camera is amazing and I think it's a super useful tool for most people, the reality is I could turn around, sell that camera and be able to actually save money by just buying the Sony FX30. I guess overall, I'm just giving you this deep, dramatic, drawn out explanation of, I no longer need cameras like that. I will essentially make money off of getting rid of those cameras and downgrading to the Sony FX30, but I, as a creator in 2024 with what I do, which is just streaming, skits, YouTube videos, brand deals, and just photos for Instagram and Twitter, I will benefit off of that downgrade to crop sensor and i will save so much fucking money by having that camera in my arsenal dude like the average full frame sony lens is like almost a thousand dollars nowadays i guess i just wanted to stop being that person that bitched about the overcomplication of tech and gear like the overstressing of the process that it took to get the shot and i just wanted to simplify my shit and just continue to still produce the same quality content that I have for years. Seriously gang, at the end of the day, like I'm not your dad, I'm not your financial advisor. You do what you want with your fucking money. But over the last year, I've talked to so many creators that have upgraded their equipment and the bullshit they've been fed is just hilarious. You don't need full frame. You don't need the best of the best. You don't need to work super extra hard to make your shot look better. You need to take something that you're into and you wanna share and just make a really good fucking story around it. And that's it, no need to overcomplicate it. I'm pumped, man. Clearing out some house, getting rid of things, spring cleaning, just kind of like a refresh in the vibe. I don't have to worry about those minute little things with the previous cameras that I've had for a while now. I could just do the shit I need to do now in just a simple crop sensor form. Let me know in the comments down below if any of you guys use the FX30 or any of the crop sensor like A6000 series cameras. They're still amazing cameras. I always get wild when I go on this like YouTube deep dive into like cinematic videos. It's just so sick when I watch somebody that's truly passionate about what they do take like a Sony A6500 in 2024 and make this beautiful, very well told cinematic story. And you wouldn't even be able to tell that they're using this crop sensor camera that's years old now. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm out, peace, doses.